Hi everybody. Here we can see a structural model which I created in my previous video. Also, I have done meshing on these structures, especially on flat slab with drop panels. And how I did it, let's see if I go for analysis. So what I did, I have taken the machine options, machine options, then generations of computational model. Then this machine is done on this structure. Another important points I have done in previous video, it is defining load cases, applying load cases and this generating manual load combinations. If we look at this, all the cases, we can see here dead load one, dead load two, live load one as well, combination one and combination two. So all these things are done in previous video. Here, what you will do, we will run analysis so let's click on calculations. So it is done. Now what we will do? We will learn here how to calculate the required reinforcement area for this flat slab with drop panels. As well, we will see how to display the reinforcement maps. So to do that, we have to set calculation options. I mean required reinforcement. I mean how to start the calculation of required reinforcement area. So to do that, first I have to click on design, then click on this, required reinforcement of RC slab walls. Do that. So what we found here, it is a layout which is divided into three parts. One is view, and second one is reinforcement dialogue and third one is slab and shale reinforcement dialogues. So let's concentrate on this one first. Here we have to look at limit states, what it is, ultimate limit states and serviceability limit states. And these four and five, it is the load case number Basically, this four is the combination one, and this five, it is combination two. As well, we have to look at methods. Now we are choosing here wood and armors, this one. And here, there are two options, especially the second one, we must select it. It is reduction of forces at supports or above columns and walls. Basically, this option, it reduces the forces on a support point, as I said, such as a column, by using the average value of the moment and stresses around a support point. That's the main point. Now, We'll go to click on calculate.
Okay, we got it. Here we can see the calculation status. It says admissible deflection value has been exceeded for panel number 21. Here we have panel number 21 and 34 to 37. These 34 to 37, it is drop panels. So let's close this. So we are done here. Now our next target is to display the maps of required reinforcement area. So in this regard, we will come here. Reinforcement dialog. Here, required reinforcement area A. In this row, click on this X minus. As well, click on a scale, change this to 56 colors. As well, we have to do some additional things. It is to select this with description and open new window with a scale displayed. Now apply it. Let's minimize this. And we can bring it here. Say somewhere here. Okay. Now this one, it shows the maximum value is 800. Now maximum value 800, we can see it here, where it is. If you look at here, see it is 800. Here 800, here 800 and also seeing the color we understand 800 means very deep color. This one, this one, this one, this one. So we got this value for this one, X minus. If we want to see for the X plus, so let's click on X plus. Again apply. Surely it will be on the middle part now. Apply it. See, in the middle part. What is the maximum value? 1319.96. Enlarge it and look at the value. This is exactly at the position of the column, maximum value, 1319, 1319, 1319, 1319. This is for X+. If we want to check it in other direction, we can do it very easily. Say, if I put here Y+, plus, apply it, you can see it in other directions. Look at, we got it. Even X-, minus. We can see that also. See, this is X minus. So we got everything. We understood maps for the panel. Now we click on exit. We got it. Now our next target is to display the map of deflections display map of deflection. So in this regard, what we will do? Say we are going to the scale. Change it to automatic scale. And click on SLS. Select this deflection, this one. Select it. And make sure at the bottom, we description should be selected also. Another important thing is instead of finite element centers, change it to extreme points. Now click apply.
So we found this. To make it bigger, bring it down, it will be bigger. Now it's clear. Displays the map of deflections for panels. If you look at the values, you can see here minus 35.8. So surely minus 35.8, where it will be? Surely here, 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 and here. It will not be here because there is a four columns. So this position, one place we enlarge it, you see here minus 35.4. So this is the place. So we got it. So largest deflections, we understand where it is. Here, 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 we found it. Now, deselect this and once we deselect, now we can apply. Our next task will be to display the results of required reinforcement in tabular format. How to do that? We'll go for required reinforcement of slab on option. So let's go to design. And here, required reinforcement of slab wall options and go for this one slab and shell reinforcement click here we'll get the table once we get the table what you can do you can make it slight bigger right click here table column now what to do here once you get this, now in the reinforcement areas, we have to select this. Space, spacing E, we select this X minus and here X plus. As well, SLS, select this deflection. So, we selected at three places, it means we'll get three columns. Click OK. See, three columns are added. This one, this one, and this one. Three columns are added. Now, we can see it here also, global extremists. These three. Now, so we got it. So we are done for this part. We can close it. So I am sure that we are done on this part. So that's all.